Yeah, it's quite odd. I sometimes wonder if the film would be uh, as successful as it is if I weren't a bisexual Persian, which seemed to be my Achilles heel for so long. So that is a bit ironic. Right, and but now because you been very open about so many things yeah. that most people probably wouldn't even share a diary entry, <laughs> let alone what they did last week and how they really thought about certain people. But you put a lot of very personal stuff out, and I think it's been liberating for all of us because we all feel different in where we grew up and, yeah. and felt, you know, like we were separate somehow. Um, and I, you said your mother, your mother was very private about things, and, yes. and you, it was a big sort of thing for you to kind of just be open and. Yeah, I mean, I think you can't help who you are and the way you are, and that if I were to, I mean, I it's if I were to lie about who I was, I wouldn't be living, and that sounds so dramatic, but it is for someone who sees life in the way that I do, which is through very heightened emotions and um, sometimes a bit over the top. But also, the film to me, the minute I started writing it and then collaborating with other people on it, it was not such a solo effort. So instead of seeing it as myself, even though the subject matter and themes are very personal, it all started to take on a life of its own and started to feel fictional in a way. So as I was making it, it never felt like, oh, I'm revealing so much of myself. I, I just felt like I was telling a story. And it's amazing, people are so, um, you know, they're surprised by the sensitive nature of the work or my putting myself out there in that way. And I don't see it that way as, at all. I don't feel naked. I don't feel, feel vulnerable. I, it just feels like a story that should have been told. What is your first step in writing a screenplay? I know all of your work has been very personal. Mm -hmm. You did the slopes with a partner and that was very personal as well. What is your first step? My first step is usually just writing out scenes, dialogue scenes like a play. Uh, I love writing dialogue and I'll just write out scenes between people and I'll get ideas. I have notes that I keep uh, on my phone and notebooks, things I hear, things I find fascinating, ideas here and there. So if I have an idea that I think has enough meat to it, I'll start to flesh it out with scenes. And then once I've compiled enough scenes uh, and they start to work themselves into a narrative, that's when I take a step back and I start to overview um, where the arcs are and what the larger picture is. So you graduated from NYU? Yeah. Okay. Was there a professor there that instilled something in you, like a mantra, something that's always stayed with you? Maybe it wasn't NYU, you also went to Smith? I also went to Smith for undergrad. I had a lot of great professors. Um, you know, the best thing I heard, someone told me, and I can't remember, there are a lot of filmmakers who told me a lot of amazing things, but someone once said to me that your career is a marathon and not a race. Uh, or not a sprint, sorry. A marathon and not a sprint. And I remember that a lot because whatever stage you're at in trying to become a filmmaker or whatever you want to become in life, there's this feeling of I'm not doing it fast enough, I'm not doing it the right way. And when I heard that, it made sense because then it was like, oh, I'm just investing. I'm investing my time and my energy in this larger goal that I am pacing myself and figuring out what my steps are in this career. And I know the film is screened at several festivals. Yeah. Have people come up to you afterwards and said, you know, I felt that way in life. I didn't feel connected to my family. I didn't feel connected to my community. Yeah. For whatever the reason was. I think that's the one thing that bonds most people together is that most people I know feel like aliens or feel really weird and like they don't fit in. And that's what's so odd is that there, the, to me, it seems quite rare if you do feel like you fit in and you're socially adjusting perfectly and that every new situation you're in, you're in ideal spirits. Yeah, and it's funny because it's not specific to any one demographic or minority, I think. And those are the films I love, the films about outcasts and the people I most identify with are the people who don't know where they belong and are always on the peripheral and of things. It's so odd because then I meet people who are to totally socially adjusted and really like themselves and feel at home in every situation and I hate them always.
I think you almost feel safe being an outsider. I, I interviewed someone else who said that they felt safe in that way, and that actually struck a chord for me. And I started to look at my own life and realize, you know what? Maybe I actually feel safe in that role. I feel that's where I belong. I will never quite be. I wonder. I wonder. I never thought of it that way, but I will. One time I was at a party for a premiere we had, and I felt so uncomfortable. I felt, and I had all this attention, and it was my party, and I had, I felt like there was no one in that room I could talk to, and it was a room full of friends and, and, and loved ones, but I think the attention and the kindness was so overwhelming that I, I hid in the bathroom for a while. Just weird. With appropriate behavior, was it more important to you to have structure and plot or for rich characters? Because each of your characters is very interesting and quirky and is wrestling uh -huh. with its own dilemma. I think most filmmakers play to their strengths, and my strength is character and not plot. And I would like to develop my craft so that plot is first and foremost, and I hope over practice and years and years of trying that I can get there, but at this moment in my life I really love character and um, dialogue heavy work and exploring different people's nuances rather than the crazy uh, antics they get caught in. And lastly, have you kept up with any, I mean, this is so cliche, but classmates.com, you know, you've been interviewed before saying that you unfortunately didn't feel pretty, which I can't imagine looking at you, but you know, we all get terrible names put on us and, and it's sort of a difficult time. Have you had anyone reach out to you like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like you're doing this and you're, you're an indie wire and filmmaker and, and it's like most people don't reach that level. Um, so I'm not on Facebook. I came back on a few days ago to promote the film because I had been on for years and then I left because it just eats up a lot of my time and I, I don't have any self-control. Like I think a normal human being can enjoy, because it's a really great tool to publicize things or to keep in touch or to read about interesting articles. It's a fantastic tool and I'm not anti-Facebook. I just cannot function as a regular human being with it on my computer. So I disabled my account and then I, I started it up to pro promote this week's release. And I got a lot of messages from people I hadn't heard from in decades. But none of them were in reference to the ugliest girl at school contest that I won. So um, I don't care about that and I don't want them to be, but I would love to know um, if, if you made that website, let me know. I'm so curious. <laughs> I'm dying to know who and why, uh, who made it and why they made it, uh, and that's a conversation I'm dying to have. Someone made a website? Oh yeah, no, that's the whole thing, but there was um, a contest online for the ugliest girl at school and I won it. And what's fascinating is that most of the other girls on the website were very beautiful but just sluts or had bad reputations or had like broken up. They had like controversy, but I was the only person who was legitimately unattractive on the list. <laughs> and who like I had no friends and I was I was a real loser like I'd eat my lunch in the the locker room of um, the gym and then I graduated to eating it in the recital hall lobby uh, instead of the cafeteria because I was so socially awkward um, and so that's what's so hilarious about this is like who even had the idea I wasn't even so popular to have made a list like that and I was actually almost like a little bit flattered that I someone knew my name.